Hi. On the book. So uh, if we may start with you, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, if you have any comment, please. ワークミドも、ワークミドは after 311, the big issue in my, in my administration and even after I resigned was, are we going to restart uh, 20, 27, immediately 27 reactors were stopped. And, and the big debate in the administration, even after I resigned, was what are we going to do with restart of all the others? 3.11 それで、えー、Before 311, we had the Atomic Safety Commission, and all of these decisions were left up to solely that commission. しかし but this Nisa uh, nuclear excuse me, nuclear industry safety commission is now criticized as inappropriate used to it was used to used to be an inappropriate group. Can you restate that, please? The, but now the nuclear NISA, it's the NISA, so it's the nuclear, ha, has been criticized for all of these um, decisions because they're, they're made in an insular environment and there is no transparency. And so he's connecting this to exactly uh, the issue of transparency and the issues that we're talking about with the NRC, Edison, and regulatory issues. After 3.1.1, the whole issue of restart was it was the very first hurdle for him personally. It was the hardest hurdle to actually rethink his uh, his philosophy on nuclear because, as he mentioned before, everything had changed 180%. So this was the hurdle in his career. The first and most important part was the stress test for these reactors. We need to figure out a way. How can we test them for stress? And as you're doing such tests on the reactors, the most important part is the connection to the safety commission and regulatory agencies, open, having an open dialogue and an open, transparent uh, conduit and conversation. And thirdly, uh, having local support and the conversation with the local people that are affected by these issues. This, local municipalities, pardon me. Okay. And, and finally, because of the first three, uh, the first three points, we needed to create a four-person commission to implement all of these issues so that there would be an open dialogue between. Okay, 
野田内閣のときの大いの２つの原発だけで、それ以外は現在、すべて止まっている状況です。As a result, the old, the old, the old NISA that we were talking about, the old safety commission has been abolished, and a new, as a result of overcoming this hurdle, a new regulatory commission, safety commission, has been established. Nuclear Regulatory Authority is the English translation. The new NISA that we were talking about, the old safety commission has been abolished, えー、新しい規制のルール、安全基準を決めることになっています。ですから、これから、我が国でも再稼働を認めるかどうか、あるいは原発の新設を認めるかどうかは、この新しいルールに基づいて、まずは規制委員会が技術的な点で判断すると、そうなります。And therefore, any questions that are regarding to restart or construction of any new nuclear power plants will have to go directly through the nuclear regulatory authority, this new created entity. すでにこの規制委員会はいくつかの原発については、活断層といった断層がサイトの中にあるということで、再稼働の申請そのものに対して、審査をしないという、出されても審査をしないという姿勢を示しています。So what's really, really important about the direction from now on is doing more research about the active faults. Many of these plants are placed on or near active faults, and so we need to do more testing, and this is going to become a critical element of the decision-making process for restart. There should be no nuclear plants obviously created there. しかし、昨年の12月の総選挙で、自民党の政権にまた変わった後は、安倍総理を含めて、再稼働をさせ,るさせたいということで、この委員会に圧力をかけていると、そのように私にはあの受,け止め受け止め、あの受け止めています、私はそう,そういう圧力がかかっているように受け止めています。Um, unfortunately, la with uh, December, the last election in Japan in December, we have a new administration, the Liberal Demo Democratic Party that Abe Prime Minister is leading. He is putting exceptional pressure on this nuclear regulatory authority, and it's just very, very, it's a very, very unfortunate situation for me to watch, and that's where I am uh, viewing this situation. あのこの圧力に対抗しなければならないと思ってます。And I join you in putting all pressure against this nuclear regulatory authority. I join you in solidarity with your efforts, what you're doing here. We're in the same boat. Any other, uh, uh, please go ahead, Commissioner, the, the courageous uh, Commissioner. No, I, I, um, you know, I wanted to comment. I think it was an interesting point that Peter raised, and it, it, is, it is one of those issues, I think, that, that um, certainly uh, looking back is, I would say, almost stunning. Uh, 
is that we did not take any action at, at plants in the United States. Uh, and there was very much pressure uh, on the NRC to treat this as a Japanese accident. Uh, and as a result, it, it was very, very difficult. Uh, I recall a few conversations where I, I tried to broach the topic of even just a halt on licensing actions. And there really was, within the commission, and, and it, a lot of it comes from the congressional pressure that, that uh, Peter talked about, there was really not even an, a willingness to discuss a, a moratorium on, on licensing. Um, and, you know, the number of B&W plants, uh, you know, perhaps this weighs in favor of, of the action, the number of B&W plants in the United States is fewer than the number of Mark I uh, uh, BWRs in, in the United States. Uh, so perhaps it was, you know, that may have weighed in to some degree. But, um, but it is a fascinating fact to look back and, and see uh, that, you know, we really took there was no direct impact on any U.S. facility following the action. Uh, and um, and uh, there are plants likely, uh, well, not likely, but I'm, well, I would say likely because I don't know for sure, but say after the bombing in Boston, uh, most nuclear power plants in this country took additional security measures. Uh, that's standard process and protocol. Yet after the largest accident involving Western or U.S. essentially based technologies, there was not one single immediate action for any nuclear power plant in this country. Uh, and, uh, you know, it is one of those things that when you're in the middle of it, it's, you know, it's, it's difficult to process to some extent what that means. But it, it is, I think, a very, very interesting fact that, that he brought up. And I had, until he had said it, it, it refreshed some memory. I mean, we did look at it and know the, the talk, some what commissioners were telling me at the time was, well, what, what did the NRC do after Chernobyl? I mean, that was what really people looked at. What did we do after Chernobyl? Because it was a plant in another country. But Chernobyl technology was very, very different technology from U.S. technology. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and there wasn't as much thinking, well, what, you know, what happened after Three Mile Island? And um, so it, I think it was a very interesting, and in, in, as I know Prime Minister Khan has talked about, um, the idea that has come out of other reports in Japan is this idea of the nuclear village. So a strong connection between the industry, the regulatory agencies, the government. Uh, and, and that connection exists in the United States to, to, to some degree, perhaps not to the extent in Japan, but it, it exists. Uh, and uh, so there, you know, there are more parallels, I think, with the accident in, in Fukushima with the United States than initially I think people wanted to acknowledge. And um, so I, I hope as we go forward, people will continue to, to reinforce that. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gunderson. Any any thoughts? How many of uh, the different reactors do we have here in the U.S.? Because you predicted, or you said that there, if there was going to be an accident, you could predict the likely areas. What do you see here? The uh, Mark One design um, was built by General Electric right up in San Jose, and um, it was designed by Ebasco in Manhattan. Um, then it was a turnkey project, which means that General Electric and Ibasco did fixed price projects. So Daiichi Unit 1 was um, all of the, the elevation, the 10 meter uh, distance above the sea, the seismic criteria, all of that was determined not in Japan. It was an entirely American designed uh, system, um, largely in California, where um, I frequently was in San Jose back back in the day. Um, we are, it's hard to put luck and Fukushima Daiichi in the same sentence, um, but the, the, the Japanese and the, the, the Western Hemisphere are extraordinarily lucky that the earthquake occurred at 2 o'clock in the afternoon instead of 2 o'clock at night. If the accident had happened 12 hours later, there would not have been a thousand people at Daiichi to fight it. There would have been a hundred. And the people that were off site could not have gotten into the site to help because the infrastructure had collapsed. Uh, we would likely have had um, 13 meltdowns and not three. 
Um, of the plants along the Pacific, Daiichi, Daini, Anagawa, and Tokai, um, there are 37 diesels. 24 failed because of the tsunami. So the tsunami didn't just affect Daiichi, it affected the Daini, Anagawa, and, and Tokai. Um, so um, when we can, we can thank our lucky stars that there were enough people, enough brave people at those sites who, um, who stayed behind and fought, um, uh, who fought a dragon they could not see for, um, for weeks to get these reactors under control. Um, I, I believe the world owes them uh, the, those several thousand people who stayed behind. And, and Prime Minister Khan, for, for facing down Tokyo Electric, um, we owe those people a, a great debt of gratitude.